put in pre-game uh, translates to what actually happened on the court. Yeah, I thought we executed our scout really well. I mean, Caitlin um, demands so much respect out there and attention, and that's what we did. And we have Benoit Laney. I mean, what could you, what more could you ask? Uh, you know, one of the best defenders in this league, if not the best. Um, she really just takes it on you, just committed to, to excellence, really. And, you know, Caitlin, it made it tough for her now. You just have to repeat it again. But it was a, the team but behind the ball, I thought we, um, we played with a sense of urgency, which we really didn't do in Washington. Um, first, if we can answer, you know, there's so much excitement right now around the league. Like, this wasn't a sell-off, but it was close. What is that like to, like, finally, like, you guys have wanted this for a long time, expected this to, see, to experience it on the road? Obviously, you draw really well at home. What's it like to experience it on the road, too? It's really nice to just be able to um, to just see the growth, and obviously Stewie's been in, in the league a lot longer, so I think she could talk about you know particularly the away teams and what what that looks like. But um, to be able to come here on the road, seventeen thousand fans, and um, understand that they're cheering against us, and we have to come out ready to play, and I think it it helps. You know, we have to fight adversity, we have to show up and play our forty minutes of best basketball to be able to um, to win. But I think it just you know is a credit to the growth of the league, the individuals coming in, but also every player that has been here and has just seen the continuous growth um, of attendance and viewership and the product on the court just continues to get better as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, this is how you want every game to be. And when it's a sellout crowd, when it's loud like this, it's like gives you a similar playoff atmosphere feel. Um, and that's what we refer to because usually in the playoffs, all the games are sold out. Um, so we might be changing our terminology a little bit um, if we're just going to continue to set the precedent uh, home or away, making sure fans are here. But people want to be a part of this. And the, the thing now is to con continue to sustain it, um, continue to take the momentum that we have and turn it into something even more of a movement um, and just show the people who aren't watching that you're missing out. We'll take one. The, the um, Fever had, had a run Well, we know teams are going to go on runs, um, and that's just kind of how basketball goes. It's a game of runs, and understanding when they did go on their run what we were not executing well on, on defense, and I think in that fourth quarter we just um, understood we were right there to be able to close out the game, and we just had to get stops defensively and take our best shots offensively, and that's exactly what we did to be able to um, win the way that we did and not let them creep back into that game. Awesome. We'll go one question each on Zoom, starting with Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Coach, um, first of all, thank you all for being here. Congrats on the win. Coach, my question is for you. Um, 12 of the first 17 points were scored in the paint. Um, you, were up by, you were up by double figures when you started 2 of 14 from three-point range. I know it's a small sample size, but what can you say about the interior penetration so far, particularly from your smaller players like Sabrina? Yeah, no, I thought it was great. Um, we, you know, we'd spoke about it. Um, you know, to be great, you have to not just settle up with the three. We had a lot of wide open threes that we typically don't miss that many. Um, but just encourage them to just keep playing in the right way. We talk about paint to great. I think any time we can get two feet into the paint, we've got really aggressive guards and post players that can get in there. And I mean, they're high percentage shots. And we didn't finish. We're finding the open man. We got them in rotations and got easier looks. So it just takes discipline. How you know how to play? How to play in the right way? We're missing shots. We we have to make sure. Um, you know, we get two feet in the paint. Forty-eight PIP in the this this time. I'm five eleven, Jeff. <laughs> we'll go over to Christina. Mouse in the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congrats on the win. Uh, my question is for Sabrina. Just go following up off of Jeff's um, point two. You were two two of eight from the three point line, but I feel like you seem really confident attacking the paint, finishing at the rim. Um, can you just talk about the work that you put in um, to be able to be confident doing that, just mixing your bag this season? Yeah, I mean, I've worked a lot um, in the off season just on my floater and being able to get into the paint. Um, knowing my shot's not going to be able to go in every single night. Um, obviously, continuing to trust it. Um, I've put in a lot of work, and shooters just keep shooting. And so knowing that that's going to be able to open up the floor for us offensively, and, and they are going to go in, but when times, um, you know, are 
that they're not going in and my team needs me to score and continue to just attack defenses. I want to be able to get into the paint. And so I think I was able to do that a little bit tonight, which in turn just, you know, collapsed them defensively and allowed us to just continue to spread the floor and um, pick them apart offensively. Jackie? Hi all, congrats on the win. Uh, Stewie, this is for you, and this is slightly, not necessarily on the game, but I saw you walk into the arena and you were carrying BG's new book, Coming Home. So I'm just curious if you can tell me what the intent was there to sort of bring it along with you, and were you reading it on the bus, and, and what do you think of it so far? Yeah, I mean, I think my intent was um, I wanted to continue to, to promote her book. and. Uh, I pre-ordered it and I got it before we left on this trip and um, I do have a little bit more free time when I'm on the road so I have time to read because I don't have children here <laughs> um, and I think it's it's just amazing to kind of uh, hear her dissect everything I was honestly thinking to myself like I want to finish reading it but also I want to listen to the audio version just to hear it in her voice um, and like I said I mean it's it's honestly inspirational every time um, I think about what she's been through and the way she's able to navigate it and still be um, playing basketball and playing basketball at such a high level. You didn't get Thanks. an advanced copy? You share an agent. I didn't get an advanced copy. They didn't ask me to proofread it either. <laughs> <laughs> Editor. You're taking our job. Editor Stewie. <laughs> we'll go over to Fifi. Hey, Stewie. Uh, two 40 point performances last season against the Fever. Today, I mean, Rain was really working and had 31 points tonight. Uh, what matchups are you really seeing against this team that just seems to be working game after game? Just continuing to be aggressive, um, running in transition, knowing that, you know, their their posts are, are really kind of in the paint a lot. And once we can rebound and run, we'll get, we'll get whatever we want in transition. And um, doing whatever I can to put them in the most uncomfortable position that they want to be guarding defensively. Um, but in general, I just wanted to, to come out more aggressive coming off of last game. And, um, you know, we'll see the adjustments they make come Saturday and um, take whatever they give us. Thank you. Miles? Hi, all. Uh, I've got one for Sabrina. Uh, Benajah drew the primary defensive assignment and Tom Caitlin and finished a plus 43 from the floor tonight. There was a lot of talk about what she was doing on that defensive end, but there was also a strong stretch midway through the second quarter when the shot selection from the team looked to be a little bit sped up. And it was there that B went a few times and got to the rim, hit a mid-range jumper. What makes her so effective in those stretches where as a group you need to settle down offensively and, and jumpstart the offense again? Well, she plays to her strengths, and we play her to her strengths as well, understanding um, what she's capable of doing, particularly when she has mismatches, and understanding that that's um, a high-quality look for our offense when we're able to get her in transition, um, down low. She's so composed. She's also a great passer, and so our ability to get her the ball and then um, just move on the weak side and continue to create advantages um, really helps. But I think tonight, I mean, the way she played defense and was able to continue to do what she does offensively um, just shows why she is the player that she is in this league and you know how how much of a high standard we hold her to to be able to do that every single night she always guards the best player night in and night out and does what she does offensively and so um, we know that that's nothing new to us but I'm just so happy that she was able to go out there and do that tonight and kind of put everyone on watch to what she's really able to do. Thank you congrats on the win. Lucas? Thank you. I just have one question for Coach. Uh, Niara off the bench had a few standout plays, running the floor, sticking with Kelsey Mitchell. Um, does she look different to you this year at all, just in terms of the way she's moving athleticism-wise, or am I sort of looking into something that's not there? No, I, I would agree with that. I mean, last year she was coming back from having a year out with surgery, and it takes time to you know, to get your body back where you want to be. She's got, uh, she's playing with a lot more confidence having that experience over overseas with Prague. And uh, she had great minutes tonight. I think her athleticism and her ability to switch onto the guard and, but also get out to the rim and defend with a, a big, you know, big body. Um, yeah, it, it's exciting. Cause I think, you know, we talk about our bench and I thought we had some good pockets from a few of them, but Niara um, 
you know, hope we can continue to build on that. But yes, she does look quicker, so which is nice to see. Thanks. We'll go to Jennifer and then finish with a few more in the room. Uh, this question is for any of any of you um, heading home undefeated. What do you think the atmosphere will be like at Barclays with such a big matchup? Um, I mean, it's our home opener, so I hope it's it's filled with excitement and just continuing to build off of the the energy and what we created last season. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough starting the season on the road, uh, but we want to continue to use that as our strength. But very happy to go home and. Um, play in front of our home crowd where people cheer for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so I was wondering what you thought about just initially tonight with Caitlin Clark, um, just seeing her playing in the WNBA. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I thought that um, I you should just talking about like from a yeah, from basketball your, perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously she's a very, very talented player, and um, I was talking with someone before the game, and it's like she's a number one pick, and number one picks continue to uh, grow and develop into this league and, and really make their mark. And um, for her to be able to handle everything that she's handling um, on and off the court and still play and uh, be locked in with her team, it's um, it's great to see. I think that, you know, everyone knows, Sav and I know, coming to the WNBA, there's an adjustment just from the level of play um, and playing against the best every single night. Um, but she has a, a good group around her to continue to, to build and learn, and obviously a young core, but um, reminds me a little bit of when I was in Seattle. Awesome. We'll finish with Barb. Uh, yeah, uh, Sabrina, I'm sorry for this was asked. I was, I was late, but Caitlin said before the game that she got Pac-12 television just to watch you, and that she loved watching you. And can you talk a little bit about, like, I mean, your cir circumstances were different, because the bubble and everything going on, but what was it What was it like when you first came into the league and the adjustments that you had? Yeah, I mean, you know, I uh, I hosted her and her dad at Oregon on um, when she came to visit, so we kind of go way back, and um, to be able to see her um, do what she did in college and you know, now being able to go up against her, um, I'm just excited to see what she's gonna, you know, be able to accomplish. Obviously, my my rookie season, I played two games, and so I think it was a little bit um, different than what a lot of people have had to go through. And then, you know, coming back into my first season playing, um, I was navigating being that number one pick, having the target on your back, and also navigating not being healthy and trying to come back. And so. Um, it's just tough. I mean, you know, you always are going to have to fight adversity, and I think that's part of everyone's journey is being able to kind of weather that storm and figure out what makes you you. And she's so young, she's going to be able to learn and grow. Um, times like this are, are kind of when you figure out what you're really made of and how you can continue to improve as a teammate, as a basketball player, as a person. And so um, I'm not the least um, – you know, a bit worried about what she's going to be able to accomplish in the league. I just know she's going to continue to work really hard and stick with it, and good things will happen to good people. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.